The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate the growl and the prowl of us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 12, NASDAQ off 21, S&P's off 5.5, gold's up 370. We get silver flat, $17.84 an ounce. Light sweet crude off 28 cents, $55.25 25 a barrel. And we're going to get oil numbers today, too, right? We got enough going on today? I think we might. Oil numbers. Oil numbers. Fed. Fed. Apple after the close. GDP numbers. ADP payroll numbers already. I like it. De definitely. Notes. Notes up four ticks. 129.12. 30 year bond up 13 ticks. 159.03. And King Dollar. King Dollar up 66 ticks. Trading 97.755. The euro is at 111. The yen is at 109. 108.91. And the pound is at 128 to 1 U.S. dollar. And uh, no doubt there's uh, quite a bit of action out here this morning. Um, Market-wise, you know, you're down slightly out here. If we go take a look at I believe Yum come out uh, also. And they're having down 3 bucks or something when I started. Oh, 3 bucks down $10 now. Holy cow. Look at this thing that's taken apart. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Put this back. And this is all about, uh, it looked like it was about Pizza Hut. Okay. I think it would make sense, man. Do you know what I mean? Because there are so many pizza delivery places, right? That is a tough business to be in, man. <laughs> Let alone not just pizza delivery, yeah. that the food delivery, the in, food business in, in general. In general, yeah. Oh, no doubt. So let's see. Yum Brands fell the most of four years after the company posted sales that traded estimates last quarter. It's Pizza Hut chain struggled to attract more diners as rivals ramp up delivery and mobile. Yeah, there's no doubt. Man. Yeah, and that's just uh, talking about their rivals, let alone, like I said, I mean, you got, you know, McDonald's, right? They came out with their earnings. They're doing like $4 billion in delivery sales. That's got to hurt a company like Pizza Hut. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have considered McDonald's a quote-unquote rival. Right. Yet, guess what? They are right now when you're talking about that they are now a delivery food oh, yeah. chain. Um, let me see this. Unilever. Ah, oh, there it is right there. Unilever. So check this out. When's the last time you ordered ice cream? <laughs> not, not, not that long ago. Uh, not, not too recently, I should say. But I go on occasional streaks. Why? What do you? Ben and Jerry's. You're talking about ordering at what? Delivery? Yeah. Uh, yeah, not for a few weeks, but I've been eating pretty healthy for the last few weeks. But I've, as I've told you, I've been on some good streaks occasionally. Okay, so this is so cool, folks. There was a, there's, there's an article today uh, in the Tampa paper, okay? Okay. And what it's about is that Ben & Jerry's, uh, Unilever owns Ben & Jerry's. Okay, okay? I didn't, was and, not aware. Go for it, yeah. And check this out, man. This, this is the most, this is the number one product on Uber getting delivered right now. Okay. Ice cream, okay? Is it? And, yeah, and what they've done is this. So check out what they've done is that Uber has made um, deals with a lot of the gas stations. Okay. Okay. So because this is a gas station, is a twenty-four hour deal. Yes. And they're showing how an Uber driver turns around, and it looks like just it just says they said it just says ice cream shop. Yes. Right. You order the ice cream, you get two two quarts. Yeah. Two, so two two of the. Uh, so I told you about this. Yeah. Right? No, yeah, I we know. We went over this. That's okay. What, just so I, yeah. I was reading it this morning, that's why yeah. I was cracking up. It's huge. Right. I bet. It's I've huge. told you. It. So it's, to bring people full circle in the yeah. deal. So you know, not only do they have regular delivery. For yogurt, you know, yogurt, whether yeah. it's, so they have Yogurt Naturally, which is a great uh, yogurt place in Tampa. They okay. have Yogurtology, another good place in Tampa. Okay, yeah. Yogurtology, more of a chain. But then they have, I think it's called Ice Cream Now. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And all it is is prepackaged yeah. ice creams. Right. Like Ben & Jerry's. Um, like Talenti, yeah. okay, like Breyer's Ice Cream. Okay. Uh, like haagen Right. Okay, they're all in there. It's not just... And they'll just deliver them at a premium. Yep. And I said to you, I didn't realize it was just gas stations. I said I thought it was literally a guy or a girl yep. sitting in their apartment, sitting in their office. They right. had a huge freezer right. just full of prepackaged ice creams. Oh, yeah. And that's their delivery right. service, right? It makes yeah. even more sense, though. It's actually 7-Eleven. It's actually a place that they already have these things. So they just have the clerk run out, grab them, Uber picks them up. Right. They're already there. Right. Well, that's how that's what that article is about. But I bet there's people just like that, too. You can do all of them. Yeah. If it is, it, maybe it, it 
it might make more sense because you still have to have somebody working there. You have to oh, have yeah. somebody doing it. So to just yeah. have somebody that's sitting there in front of an ice cream full, uh, freezer yeah. full of ice cream, right. I mean, there might be enough business. It might. They said but I've done so it myself. But I'm trying to swear off that because that's not the healthiest thing in the world to be I doing. I just thought it was so intriguing. You push three buttons and you got ice cream showing up at your door, and right? And they said two quarts of 20 bucks. That's how it comes down it, to Well, it gets expensive, yeah. right? Because the product itself yeah. is an elevated price tag. Right. And then you have the fees associated yeah. with it. So maybe you, instead of paying $5 at the store, it's you're paying six fifty seven, right? right? So that brings it up right. to fourteen. Yeah. Then you're paying a buck fifty service, yeah. ninety nine cent delivery, delivery and yeah. a two dollar tip. tip. Right. Exactly. Right. Pretty. Pretty good. remarkable. It man. is remarkable, man. That I is. mean, it's. it's <laughs> I just. That's like pretty cool, actually. As if Americans need more uh, ability to order uh, food. Well, the, at and, least and they were ordering good food, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> okay, back to the markets. Here so we go. Let's go look at these bond markets. So bonds today, folks. Bonds, metals. Dollar. I mean, I, I suspect everything's going to go wild at uh, two o'clock. Yeah. Um, Maybe at two thirty. Yeah. Maybe at two thirty. And right now, bonds are saying that they want higher price, lower yield again. So this is going to be intriguing watching this thing shake out, man. I mean, yeah. You came all the way back. We came back. We tested that September thirteenth low. You know, we hadn't rejected it. I mean, this did is. Did we test that low? Sometimes I well, get it, lost on what. Uh, well, it didn't get to the very low. No. Okay. Because sometimes one twenty-eight sixteen. We got to one. 2901. I mean, we're yeah. a half a point just to be yeah. fair on. Right. Well, my point is, is that you come back with 1.1 million and 1.1 million versus 2.4. Yeah. You know, I would rather see it tested. Trust me. Okay. Yeah. Now the question is going to be, okay, can it get any traction topside? This thing is going to be uh, on fire at two o'clock. You know, it's, you know, it's really wild too. Is that when I'm saying that it seems like every Fed day we say that okay, you know, you're going to get some action. And sometimes we don't, but it seems to me that today we should, because it's the end of the cycle, meaning that they're not expected to cut next month. Okay. And then, okay, so what's going to be in the statement? You know what yeah. I mean? We're at all-time highs. Yeah. So what, what, what are they going to say to placate the market? Now, what right? is interesting about this meeting, I said to the top, so it's a little bit different that you don't get a forecast, you don't get the dots. You're going to be able to get, so you're going to get the statement, right. and then you're going to get the press conference. Right. And so I imagine, though, a lot of what you might get in the forecast is going to come out maybe in the press conference as they're yes. uh, talking to Chairman right. Powell. And we'll see how many dissents we get. Yes, yeah. for sure. 97.1% you know? the uh, probability that the market's pricing in there right now. What I said to you at the top, right? This Pre is pretty cool. Pretty yeah. interesting down here. So if you look on the bottom graph here that we have up on Tiger TV, the white line is the probability of a hike. Well, that line has been at zero since the beginning of August, okay? okay. Now, that is for this meeting only, right. okay? What's so interesting is look how far we've come. Now, if you back it up, okay, about m end of May, call it almost June 1st, yep. this is when the world was a different place. We were looking for hikes, hikes. okay? The odds of a hike was almost 100% in March. You were still at 80% in May, and the world changed a lot. So then look you see that, the huh? odds of a hike, basically plummet, you see the odds of a cut yeah. begin to elevate. They both kind of elevating around 30, and it's just been, and look at the volatility, and that's where we saw the difference in rates, right? When we went from August, September, but nonetheless, you got yeah. an odds of a cut at about 100, odds of a hike at zero, right. and we get the, the news at two o'clock. Yeah. And there's a question about uh, the press conference. Yes, this year there's a press conference every Fed meet. That's how this thing is uh, working this year. Paul will change that whole deal. Here we go. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow is up by 19. Nasdaq's down 9. S&Ps are off 3.5. And, and we're going to have the oil numbers coming out. So let's go take a look at that oil market. And we see. sure are. So jumping around first, we're looking for, in terms of crude oil inventories, we get the number at 1030. Looks like the whisper number, an increase of about 200,000. The median analyst survey number, an increase of about 500,000 barrels. Wow. Yeah, so we'll find out. That's why it was a while there. Usually we're getting millions. We had 9.8 million recently. No, there's just such a difference between the whisper number and the survey number. Well, I like to, the whisper number, we could put in a number right now of minus 50 million barrels, and that might tweak the whisper number. Yeah, right. Um, so be right. aware versus the analyst estimate, those analysts are accountable for their job. They're right. accountable to their, versus the, this is the Bloomberg whisper number, yeah. I believe. And you can see how the whisper number changes as time goes. Um, we have an input in that, so we'll, we'll select a number. we got about five and a half minutes. Checking out where we are at right now on crude. We're looking at the December contract. You're trading about $55.25. Let's see what kind of probabilities we have in terms of the volatility the market's pricing in. So what's nice is the 11 a.m. is lining right up at 55.25. If you want some bullish and bearish exposure, exposure, you're paying almost no intrinsic value. So the bullish spread costing that, huh? you about 17 bucks. You're slightly out of the money here by about a penny. The bearish spread is going to be almost identical, but you're going to have that penny of intrinsic value, so it's probably going to be you're selling it, and as it is, about $1 more, 35 bucks or 35 pennies of movement you would need by 11 a.m. to start to break even from right where we're at. If you want a little bit more time, let's see where the 12s line up. What's nice is same exact price point. And we'll just like slide it down. So here's a, a very easy comparison, right? You want the 11 a.m.s? You're paying, you're buying in at 55.43, which is 18 bucks. You want exposure till noon, and you're buying in at 55.50. So you're paying about seven pennies extra per side for, now, for that yeah. hour, right? So that would be a bullish spread. Same exact thing on the bearish side. You're gonna have exposure from 55.25. So you're looking at about. 48 versus 35 okay. so there you, you basically need about 50 pennies away and let's just see if the dailies line up if you want exposure all the way until 230 so 55.50 not too bad you're about 25 cents away if you really wanted it 
and the 230s, uh, 55. So these are the only ones that line up exactly with 55, 25, and it's always cool when it literally within a, that's a thousandth, right? We got tenths, hundredths, thousandth, within a thousandth Pretty intense. of where the contract's trading at. Let me look at this contract. Go okay, for it. So we got three see. minutes and 45 oh. seconds to put in our whisper number. We gonna get another uh, trophy mailed to you? Your little four-inch, so. four-inch Bloomberg trophy yeah, for the exactly. whisper number. Let's We're gonna have to break that bad boy out to show yeah, them. I saw it on right. your desk again today. I almost grabbed sure. it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Okay, went down yesterday. I'm, I'm gonna go for. We want to go low. So all right. So you're gonna be that's bearish. Gonna be a higher number. Of, so ideally, uh, if you're going bearish, yeah. Uh, a, a bigger build, right? Would Send the price of, of oil downside. It's so interesting that. No, oh, that, that was that's the distillate. Oh, okay. No, I was gonna say that just they didn't change that quick. So the survey number is five hundred grand, and the wisp is two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. I, I, I want to go with seven hundred. Okay. Then you know, yeah. they say they say uh, you know if you're taking tests or you're doing anything, your first answer is usually right. Go with your go with your gut. I mean, that's like you're yeah. taking SATs, test prep. Um, if you're really lost and you had a first answer, they do say go with your first answer really? when you get lost on like that because yeah. the human mind has the ability to talk itself out of something, you know, in terms of... Yeah, and, and that's for sure. It kind of is the same thing with trust your gut, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, did we where get they, in there? Where do they get with gasoline? It's that's what I was going to yeah, say. Let's so jump gasoline. around. Gasoline, looking for oh, a draw of 2.3 million barrels. Whispers a draw of 2.1 million barrels lot. about. Um, what are we thinking? Let's, let's put in a number. And this is why I say the whisper number, you yeah. don't, give it, don't give it as much credence because no, no, there are exactly. people just like you and me sitting right. there being like, boom, 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 done, exactly. boom, 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 done. Uh, but they're pretty close, right? They really are. So here, let me pull this up on another okay. screen. Okay, we got two minutes. Yeah, so. You can pull it up right here if you want. That's an okay, easy one to get so. back to. Gasoline. Okay, so let's see. Just type gas and we'll yeah. gasoline. Or GLCO, global commodity, will get us there. GLCO? GLCO, global commodity on the Bloomberg. We'll give Bloomberg a plug for. Uh... Okay, so gasoline right here. Okay, I think, right? I yeah. believe you're right, yep. Okay, so at 169.68. Uh, was that it or is it? No, yes, it was, it was, yep. Oh, you're at the top of the range, too. I like that. Okay, so they're saying that it's going to be a big draw. Okay, okay. so I'd go with, if they're going to, this ain't a big draw, I'd say it's going to be less of a draw. Okay. And what do you, and they're saying, I thought trading was not guessing in the den. I mean, we're not really guessing, right? You have yeah. a directional bias. And so if you're directionally biased, right. you're going to be looking for, the market to kind of confirm that right. with a draw or a right. build more right. than um, so pulling up the gas inventories and I'm sorry did you say you were bearish or bullish I'm bearish you're bearish so you're gonna look at, be looking for more gas yeah. in the market so right. you're gonna be looking for less of a draw yeah right so what uh, what are we coming I at? know there'd be more of a draw right oh less of a draw yes that's right okay yeah. so well, look at this this would be pretty funny Take, I, we can put, uh, I could put a build. I would blow some minds. <laughs> hey, why not? Shoot for the moon, man. Yeah. So put a build of 100 or something. Yeah. Okay. That would be fun. Okay. Perfect. And let's just check back as we jump around to see where they're going to be trading at. Right now, we got the price, and uh, we've dropped about seven pennies in the price of crude since we've been chatting. We got that price trading at 55.18, and we get those crude numbers in about five minutes. So jumping around a bit, man, I, I referenced it at the top, right? We got payrolls this morning and 125,000 in October. Expectation was 100,000, but sometimes the devil's in the details. A revision in September down by 42,000 to only 93. That's a, that's a big revision. It sure is, man. So you beat by 25 in October. Yeah. But you minus out the 42 and you actually, um, you know, gross net, whatever you want to call it. You miss. You go uh, into a loss. Yeah, yeah, you sure do. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, GDP number as well. We come in at 1.9% in the third quarter. Consumers continue <clears throat> to spend. <coughs> Growth in the private domestic investment continued to decline with a rate of minus 1.5%, but um, better than the 6.3% contraction in the previous second quarter. So big numbers there, and just to dig into what they had going on, Commerce Department said economic activity grew at an annualized rate of 1.9%.
slightly down from 2% pace in the second quarter. And Economist had been looking for 1.6, so a decent number. That's a good number. Better than expected print was the result of continued consumer spending as well as government expenditures. The government said personal consumption expenditures, a gauge of spending by American households, rose at 2.9% annualized rate, while government grew at the 2% rate. Big numbers, man. Well, we're going to see after the close today, folks, uh, just how many people are buying Apple phones, too. Yeah, we sure do. So and these are, drinking Starbucks. That's coffee, right. right. These are all the earnings numbers we get. Um, 1030, that is today after the market. You got Apple in there. We got Starbucks in there coming out. Lots of numbers in there as well. Um, and, of course, we got uh, MGM Facebook Brand. as well. I Facebook. knew there was one more big Facebook. one. There we go. Stay right there, folks. Tell me you and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Two o'clock this afternoon, folks. Fed Day is coming. Fed Day is here. That's right. We'll have those oil numbers right when we get back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so, gas uh, crude inventories rose 5.7 million barrels. We got enough crude, man. It seems to continue to blow it out of the top side, man. The estimate was 500,000 barrels. We put in 700,000 barrels. The number, inventories rising 5.7 million barrels. And gas inventories falling 3 million barrels. To see how that is hitting the market, we'll jump back to the charts over here. We'll pull it up, get it over here. 
And, oh boy, we're already in the 54s. <laughs> that That's was quick. It's a monster move, man. It sure is. So, I'm pulling up the contract. We were trading at again about, so about 55.25 was that number that we were looking at, that we were trading at right above. Yeah. And uh, you've seen the price drop about 30, 32 pennies. Now, to put things in context again, if you were trading the 11 AMs, we were looking for about $35 maybe. Right. That would represent 35 pennies of movement. If you were trading the noons, you needed 50 cents of movement, man. We haven't even gotten that yet, and right. we missed by 5 million barrels. So that's where I am. There was a decent amount of volatility priced into these products for the noon where you needed 50 cents of volatility. Keeping in mind that if you just execute one side of this trade, your profits are maxed out at a buck 50. Right. Right. So, right. you know, you, you, you need 50 cents of movement, and the most you can make if you trade one side of the contract alone is a buck 50. But the market's going to digest that for some time, and it comes in at 5.7 million barrels. We'll see if we get the breakdown, and then gas inventory is falling 3.04. Quite a number, man. Crude. We'll see what happens. Man, there's a lot of crude out there. There sure is. Let's go take a look at the XLE and see what that's doing to the XLE. So the XLE right now is trading out uh, nothing heavy, down 51 cents, 58.92. This hasn't been able to get any traction whatsoever, though. It's... It's so interesting that, you know, we're still at like a $50. They can't, evidently, these companies really can't do big business at 50 bucks. That's what it seems like. $50, $55. I mean, $58. We've been here for, uh, <laughs> this is, gets kind of strange, actually. You can bring it back to, yeah, was that 2006? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Big With numbers. a little bit of volatility in the mix in the meantime. Oh, right? yeah. But there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, and you can see from the, you know, the frackers are having a hard time. The drillers are having a hard time. That company, the uh, one that sells the sand yesterday, that went down 30%. The, the sand for the fracking. Okay, you know? I saw that headline somewhere. So it's like, man, I mean, that's, you know, every time that, I guess, is, hey, there's a lot There's a lot of... How about GE? Can we jump over? Yeah, we haven't GE. covered them yet. Getting yes. quite a pop for GE today. Yeah, this is quite a pop. There's no doubt. This is up. It's uh, not stopping. Now up a buck twenty. It's up a buck twenty. Almost twelve percent on their earnings. Yeah. So let's put this on a weekly. So now you you top of the range on GE on this one here. So we've been basically dealing with this for. Oh, uh, you got. That's eleven twenty. Well, 1070 to 1120. That's, yeah, that's, I mean, we just came off. If you go back to the recent low, we're under eight bucks, I believe, right? 765. Yep, 765. I mean, that's a, you're talking about almost a 30, 35% pop from that low there. Yeah, so let's see what they have to say. What do you think? Top one? Yeah, it's top one, yeah. Let's see what they got. Nope, there they are. Okay, so let's see. Industrial free cash flow. Zero to two billion dollars? That's quite a range <laughs> for their fiscal <laughs> year. Uh, they they saw a loss of one billion to one, one yeah. billion. The, oh. A loss of one billion to, that's going to be a profit to one billion. So they still have a two billion dollar range that their fiscal year adjusted right. cash flow is going to come in. But man, I'd say if you lose a billion versus you make a billion, that's quite a difference in terms of your cash yeah. flow. Um, and free cash flow is six hundred fifty million. That's not a lot of money for a monster company like that. Yeah. So adjusted earnings per share, 15 cents versus 14 year a year. The estimate had been 12, though, so they beat yeah. it by 3 cents. Third quarter revenue, 23.36 billion. The estimate was 28.77. What's going on here? That's There's down 21 percent. Yeah, I mean, just the year. estimate, though. They, they were, I mean, what, what is going on? I mean, that is quite a revenue miss for the quarter, man. Yeah. You're supposed to pull in revenue of 28 billion. You pull in 23, and your stock goes up 12 percent. Um, I imagine it's the cash flow. That they really like yeah. because yeah. this company needs some cash. They're burning. So they're glad business. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're pairing some of you know the cash burn, yeah. and they're going to be around. And the market isn't as worried about just going complete BK, running out of money. Lots of numbers there, man. The market loving what they put out though, man. Twelve percent. So fiscal year adjusted earnings per share, they're looking at fifty-five to fifty-six. Pretty close. You know, the estimate was fifty-nine. So they're basically right around that. Yeah. Remains focused on shrinking and de-risking GE Capital. Remains on track to execute about $10 billion asset reductions. Still sees industrial free cash flow positive in 2020. Um, yeah. How about, can we jump, jump in from there? Another yeah. stock that's rocking. PCG, PG&E. Getting a little bit of a reprieve. Um, PCG. That's a PCG. 
up almost 20% today. Now, mm, just pairing some of the losses it had over the last day or two. Yeah. But still, man, 20%. What's going on? Maybe some of the reprieve. I mean, it takes back, I mean, all of the losses it had over the last three days. Company's still probably in a ton of trouble, but just kind of a reprieve a bit. Because all the news I heard this morning was bad, again, in terms right. of more blackouts, more wind, the fires persisting. And some of the pictures that come out of this, man, are just oh, amazing. In terms it's unbelievable. Of, you got, you know, huge L.A. freeways with cars still going by. Right. And fires right. raging within right. yards. Yeah. That, literally. That, you know, when I was talking about the, the Getty Museum, when they said that that was getting close to it, that's just like Route 128. You're yes. going along and you got hills on the side and that's where that is. And that's exactly. pretty intense. I mean, um, the visual is just stunning, man. So this one, the headline saying, as blackouts ebb, Southern California wind risk surges. So power restored to about 73% of customers. Maybe that's what's given the stock a little bit of a reprieve. Los Angeles, Ventura County is facing gusts as high as 80 miles an hour. That is some scary stuff, man, when you're Great. dealing with these fires. Um, as Northern California residents began to get their power back, people in the southern part of the state were facing some of the strongest winds in recent memory. And utilities there were cutting service and warning blackouts could spread. PG&E said early Wednesday it restored power to about 73% of almost a million customers affected by its October 26 shutoffs. I mean, that's a full five days ago, man. Yeah. A million people. As many as 540,000 customers are facing a new round of blackouts. So, yeah. It's heavy, man. Yeah. That's... We're going to have to... I guess, you know, once all that stuff gets burnt out, I mean, it won't get burnt out again for a long period of time because there's nothing left. <laughs> but, I guess, yeah. You know, um, yeah. That's, that's a sad way of thinking of it, but, you know, that's, that's basically kind of a reality. You know what I mean? No more trees, no more nothing, then yeah. it has to, you know, start again. 877-927-6648. Let me just see what's happening with Royal Gold. Royal Gold is down $5 here. What is going on here? So this is, Royal Gold is a... Streamer, folks, okay? One of the... When you say streamer for the normal, because I, I wasn't even aware of that word. Yeah, a stream streamer, I think, of we stream on TV. Yeah, so a streamer is that they buy the streams of cash, basically. Okay. Um, they, they, they act like a bank. So they, I like to call it a royalty company. Yeah, it is a royalty company. That's yeah. the, for... So they, they, they come into companies, they finance the companies. How many employees do they, they have? 23, look 23. at that. How big are they? $7.5 billion company. Right, and what's this? I mean, it is amazing. Yeah. And they take in a half billion a year. Yeah. Well, so they're making royalties off their assets. Yep. They have 23 people <coughs> managing that paper. Yep. And, and they don't come in until they know that gold is coming out of the ground. Okay. You know? Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, down six, Nasdaq um, uh, five, S and P's down three and a half, and uh, so on. On the real gold deal, one of their companies that they do business with. Uh, let's see. As you said, man, they're yeah. streaming interest, right? So Royal Gold falling as much as six point seven percent as the company has streaming interest on thirty five percent of gold and eighteen point seven five percent. From Mount Milligan, and so this is where you have a Centura Gold tumbling as Mount Milligan Review raises concerns. So after taking an impairment charge of $230 million on the mine and starting a technical review, so the impairment charge reduced the carrying value of the mine to $522 million. So this is where exactly you're talking about. So go ahead. Uh, um, let's see. Primarily due to re reduction in gold recoveries. I got yeah, it. They're getting less and, gold. Yeah. It's costing them more. Higher unit, unit costs. Profile. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so they have a... Um, you know, a 35% interest in this right. mind, which Centura is operating. Right. Less gold, less money. You got money. it, man. You got it, for sure. So what does happen? See, the cool thing about, you know, royalty companies, streaming companies in general, is that they get their money off the top, meaning off the gross. Okay. You know, but if there's less gross, guess what? There's less money, you know? Yes. That's, yeah. that's where that comes down to. Never Reduction knows. of gold recoveries. Right, exactly. Less gold coming out. Right. Less money for... For Royal, yeah. Yeah. What a business, though, when you think about it, right? 23 people, yeah. $7.5 billion company. It, it makes me think of, uh, like, you know, almost like a hedge fund, a family-run fund. Yeah. You know, you can have a family fund in New York managing billions, right? Oh, yeah. And you got 10 or 20 people in the office because, guess what? Managing a million dollars and managing a billion dollars, yeah, there's more to do. Right. But most of the time, you're buying positions, you're doing it electronically, there's processing, there's so forth, and it's kind of similar. When you're doing the same thing, you're just... Uh, getting a percentage of revenue of, of other people operating that business for you, basically. Right. Let's see, uh, AMD, I believe AMD came out last night. I, I believe so. So let's see what that's doing. Flat, really, it's down 64 cents. Yeah, that's about 2%. It's a tiny stock, so. So let's see what they had to say. I think you can, right at the top, there was yeah. uh, tepid results, but analysts see strong execution. Let's see what they got going on here. Chipmaker reported third quarter results that were slightly weaker than expected, gave an outlook that was in line. Despite negative surprise in the quarter, analysts broadly positive on the results, noting outlook indicated continued market share gains as well as strength in new products. Let's see if we click here on the third quarter results, if that's going to get us the full. So let's see. Revenue in the current period will be about $2.1 billion. What are we seeing here? Is this the actual plus or minus $50 million? AMD said Tuesday in a statement that compares with an average analyst of about 2.15, so pretty close to in line. They are the number two maker of computer processors, and they're gaining on Intel. That's the top headline. Yeah, and look, look at this. Go for it. When you see this, folks, okay, this is pretty amazing. You know, I was looking at this before they came out with the numbers, but 
You're going to see the jump in this number was pretty amazing, man. So now they have 10,000 employees. Yeah. So so look at this. Yeah, you know, you, we were going from 1.5 to 1.8 billion. Yes. And they they're looking at 2.1 next. Quarter. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And then it smooths out a little. It comes back down, but that's pretty intense, man. And I wonder how this lines up, only because next year very similar, right? They jump yeah. back actually to 1.9 and then to two, and then they get the surge to 2.3 and 2.4. Yeah. So maybe that has to do Third with... Third and fourth quarter. It could be, uh, I say holiday, because guess what, man? They got chips in oh, yeah. computers, probably, in, in, in iPhone. I don't know. But, you know, it's, oh, it's yeah. when you have those types of similar, where Amazon has huge numbers in the quarter. Apple has huge numbers in the quarter. Right. Um, so they're going to have to be have chips in there. So we get Apple. Apple's going to be coming out after the close today. Can we do the um, expected move on Apple? Yeah. So we're at 242. 96. So All what right. we're going to do, folks, is that inside the Analyze tab in the Think of Swim platform, you can just basically put that in there and get an expectation of what the move will be, what that, that up or down. That's right. So we're getting the one-day move. Ten bucks, huh? Ten okay. bucks. Ten twenty-seven. Um, about four percent. Yeah. You know, you're, you're trading at two forty-three, and that is up or down. So basically, if you're buying an at-the-money call that expired on call it Friday because it's yes. close enough, right? You'd be paying about five bucks. You'd have to pay the same similar five bucks for an at-the-money put. So you'd be buying both legs, volatility up or down, so we're about $10, looking for volatility, not directional volatility. Apple. And let's see, what are they going to oh, take? Oh, Facebook. What about Facebook? Okay. And then we'll pull up both their earnings, because man, oh man. Facebook? So Apple's 4%. I'm guessing Facebook is going to be a bigger number, because they have more at stake in terms of percentage-wise. Facebook? $11. Yeah, more percentage, yeah. right? Because if they were trading at 200, then 10 bucks would be 5%. So yeah. 180, you're talking about 6%, maybe something like yeah. that, um, just off the top of my head. But let's pull up because both of them, staggering numbers, man, staggering. In terms of Apple, Apple almost as staggering as it gets on revenue. And the only one that really puts them to shame is Walmart. The, oh, the look of, at that. They got under, what they, we, they're yeah. only 1.09 trillion now. Nah, they were at 1.1 yesterday, weren't they? Uh, yeah, they were. That's they my were, point. Yeah. yeah, right. They were up as high as 249. Yesterday was quite a sell-off, man. Yeah. Uh, so, for the quarter, $63 billion in revenue, man. And that's what, and look at the jump, though, for their holiday quarter, man. $86 billion they'll be looking for the next one. It's almost a billion a day. It is. They're going to be there. They'll probably be there on their holiday quarter next year. Yeah. Right. I mean, because you see the right. gap. Well, I say that, but check that out, man. They were at 88.3 in 2018. Okay. That's yeah. pretty remarkable that, right. they, you know, they can't grow um, to that degree. And products, 225, they no longer have the iPhones in there, but they may get some questions on that iPhone in the conference call um, when oh, they yeah. talk about it, but they don't break it down anymore. But earnings-wise, big numbers to the bottom line, 284. And when you look at it, $2.84 per share. And how many shares they got? 4.5 billion, not bad, big money. They're just a cash machine. And how about Facebook? Facebook, a 535 billion dollar company, pretty remarkable, man. And revenue-wise, they're going to be looking for 17.3 billion, and uh, buck 91 to the bottom line. Look and at the difference in growth, though. Facebook's still growing by almost 45 to 50 yeah. percent across all the world. Definitely. Holy Definitely. Cow. I mean, they have a, a estimated PE. They're looking at about 23. They're looking at 2.4 billion shares. So look at that. That's that's a, that's a small PE for a growth aspect of what they're saying they're growing at. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Pretty amazing. Actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe there's some some worry there in terms of. There is regulatory, regulation oh, and, sure. and being able right, to continue that growth. That's regulatory spectrum. worry, exactly. Not which to they, mention, which they should have. We just saw Amazon come out with their numbers, right? They grew their advertising. I think it was from 2.5 billion to 3.9. You're talking about 45 percent growth in advertising I'm alone. Glad you just brought this up too. Amazon, folks. Uh, you know what they just did? They just went uh, zero cost for uh, food delivery. Ah. Uh, to Isn't compete with uh, the Walmarts and the they, likes. They yeah. blew Walmart away and Kroger away because they're, they're both, uh, they got rid of the, yeah, there was, I read the article this morning, they got rid of the, the, the cost of doing it, they got rid of the, if you, $35, that's what you, if you do a $35 order, you get delivered for nothing. Okay, we'll, we'll find um, it. We'll isn't pull that it wild though? Because I mean, it is, man. That's. All right, we'll find zero. it. Zero. 
<laughs> can always count on Amazon as too. The, as the zero adds more zeros to best uh, to Jeff Bezos' wealth. That's right. He uh, needs it. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now uh, down nine. Nasdaq uh, basically flat. S and P's off three and a half. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that have transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow was flat. NASDAQ is up three. S&Ps are down two. And as you come over to our website, at TFNN, folks, right under feature content, you're going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He is going to be doing a live subscriber event Wednesday, November 20th. That's hard. November 20th. November starts on Friday, man. Halloween tomorrow. We're going to love it. That's right. So Basil's going to be in there with subscribers. You can check it out on the front page, the open and call, his daily trading service. Subscribers gain exclusive access to that Wednesday webinar, 90 minutes long. He's going to be talking about a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques. Should be pretty cool, 90-minute webinar, and the market outlook ahead for 2020. 2020. Basil's got some great picks already right now, up 15% and 30% intra-year. And by request, Basil's going to be reviewing many of the techniques for the current subscribers and new subscribers subscribers that helped him in their successful analysis. That includes the rhythm of price movement in all time frames, the 
practical application of moving averages, the arc and cup formations, and the Chapman wave notations, and he'll also be discussing sectors and stocks of, the, of importance going into 2020, and of course, that'll be archived. So check it out, get in there, great service, always putting out updates for subscribers right. over the weekend. Yep. Monday morning is Trader Corner, I encourage people to check it out. And of course, 30 day money back guarantee and that'll get you all the way through November, man. Pretty right. cool. And what do we got tonight, man? World Series. World Number Series. Seven. Game seven. And this so, is so wild too because they... The they, home team can't win it, man. I know. We'll exactly. see if they can win it tonight. So the, the home team, it's in Houston. You got the Nationals and the Astros. Game seven, um, pretty remarkable. The first time that they have gone to a game seven that the home team hasn't won a game. And I actually heard a stat, not sure if it's true. First time in NBA, NHL, or Major League Baseball that the first six games of the series, the home team hasn't won a game. 1,400 series. Amazing. It is. Stay right there, folks. We've got Think of Swim coming up next. I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bell. Thanks, man. Look at him, folks.